wise to surrender. Yeah. Probably. Feeble. Respawn Entertainment's Star Wars Jedi Survivor is probably one of the more anticipated games of the year, which is saying a lot given all the big titles. Still, with its predecessor having over 20 million players since July of 2021, receiving strong critical acclaim and reportedly influencing Electronic Arts' direction with story-focused games for the better, it's easy to see why there's so much excitement. Along with larger worlds like Kobo, with mounts to tame and ride, and a hub of vendors and NPCs, the combat is heavily expanded. You get five lightsaber stances, including the new blaster and heavy guard, and can use more force powers in combat. Dismemberment against human enemies is finally in. Rejoice, Jedi psychos! AI companions also assist in battle, with newcomer Boda Kuna and the returning Marin helping out. If that weren't enough, new Jedi Chambers offer some rewarding puzzle-based side content, thanks to new perks, and provide more lore on the Jedi. Also, there are cosmetics like jackets and a bandana, instead of slight recolors of the same poncho. It's a miracle. However, for all we know about Star Wars Jedi Survivor, the story is still incredibly nebulous. Set five years after the events of Jedi Fallen Order, Cal Kestis, no longer a Padawan but a full-fledged knight, struggles to battle the Galactic Empire. He's stronger, but the Empire is also the Empire, crushing any hint of an uprising without care. Characters like Sari Junda, a former Jedi Knight who resumed her role at the end of the first game, Grease Dreidel, Captain of the Mantis, and BD-1 all return, and there are newcomers, like Boda Kuna, a mercenary. There's also the tease of a new place, a sanctuary of sorts that's worth defending, with chances being high that Cal must do so against the Empire. Of course, Coruscant, the capital of the Galactic Empire, is also confirmed, and it may be where Cal deals with the new Imperial Senator, who makes a dangerous deal. The latter is seen in the reveal trailer holding Cal's reforged lightsaber while looking very pleased, but there's a lot more going on than meets the eye. First off, Jendai Ravis. The large figure has been seen multiple times till now, and is part of a seemingly immortal race mostly wiped out by the Sith Empire. Though he leads the Bedlam Raiders on Kobo and orders his men to kill Cal, Ravis is a foil to him in some ways, recognizing his strength as a warrior. It doesn't make them friends or even friendly rivals, though. Remember the character suspended in the Bakta tank in the initial reveal trailer? He's seen walking around, a lightsaber in possession, hanging out with Ravis. In the latest story trailer, he blames Cal, and perhaps the Jedi overall, for letting the galaxy fall to this unworthy machine of an empire. Eagle-eyed fans notice the High Republic symbol on its clothes, the High Republic existed hundreds of years prior and was considered the height of the Galactic Republic and a golden age for the Jedi. It leads many to assume that this character is a Jedi who, having seen what the Empire and the Sith have done, allies himself with Ravis, who has no love lost for the Sith, for some unknown purpose. He's assumed to have fallen to the dark side and could become a major threat to Cal. Based on all this, the theory is that Cal and his friends help set up, or at least discover, a sanctuary for survivors of the Galactic Empire's oppression. Their journey to other planets is probably part of finding people who will join this place and part surviving against the Empire, which still ruthlessly hunts them. The supposed deal he makes with the Imperial Senator is probably for some form of immunity. Cal gives up his lightsaber and is no longer a threat, and the Senator ignores his existence. It may not be something Cal wants to do, especially given the Empire's extermination of the Jedi, incessant hunts, and so on, but it may be for the good of his new home. My money is high on the Senator betraying Cal because, of course he would. Regardless, the unknown High Republic Jedi probably isn't too happy about this deal. Along with having a hidden agenda, he probably wants Cal to continue fighting the Empire instead of just surviving or running away. Which is what building this sanctuary could be interpreted as. 
How Ravis's ideals align with the unknown Jedi remains to be seen, especially since he offhandedly told his goons to remind Cal why they should remain extinct. Maybe they have some connection from the High Republic era since Jedi can live to be thousands of years old. Maybe the unknown figure offers Ravis a chance at vengeance against the Empire if he helps out. The question is, how do they interact with the Imperial Senator, especially considering Cal's so-called dangerous deal with him? That remains to be seen, but it may also feed into Phase 2 of Star Wars The High Republic, with the novel Cataclysm, a continuation of Convergence, releasing on April 3rd. Perhaps it offers some clues on our mysterious High Republic Jedi. All these characters will undoubtedly come to a head. That much is a guarantee. I'm reluctant to believe that a battle at this new sanctuary will be the climax. Sure, it could be a way to throw in Darth Vader, perhaps as a rematch against Cal, or see how he would interact with the unknown Jedi, but again, that probably isn't where this story will end, especially since this may not be the last chapter in the Star Wars Jedi series. The developer has expressed a desire for a third game, thus completing the trilogy, and we know how much Star Wars loves its trilogies. Going by the original and new trilogies, Jedi Survivor could be where the good guys are down and out. There may be some hope on the horizon, but for the most part, we won't know if everything will be alright until playing the sequel. Of course, it could also go full prequel trilogy, with the third game leading to Cal's last stand and death against the Empire. Maybe Jedi Survivor ends with him coming into contact with the initial start of the Rebellion and having a fighting chance. How this will all tie into the existing canon is a big question, but given how Cal's entire existence is handled outside of the games, it's possible. As for other things that could play a role in Jedi Survivor's story, the Inquisitorious, what's become of them? Cal and the Mantis crew met the fifth sister in the novel Jedi Battle Scars, and the Inquisitorious appears in the Obi-Wan Kenobi TV series. They also have a history with Cal, so it seems a given that they'll appear at some point. Marin is seen in the new story trailer using Force Push, which she probably learned from Cal. How does that affect her connection to the Force, especially given her propensity to Night Sister magic? Will she eventually wield a lightsaber or perhaps become susceptible to corruption? Time will tell. Star Wars Jedi Survivor launches on April 28th for the Xbox Series X and S, PS5, and PC. It's bound to be a hit like the first game, but we can't wait to see how the narrative unfolds and shapes the series' future. That's all for now. If you enjoy what you saw, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, now is a great time to subscribe. We upload brand new videos every single day. After subscribing, don't forget to enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you next time, right here on Gaming Bolt.